the Lord Jesus fulfilled. It was promised from the very beginning, the first mother, mother of all the living, that a child would be born and his heel would bruise the head of the adversary. His heel would be bruised, but his heel would crush the head of our adversary. And it happened at the cross. Come to declare the victory of the King of Glory and the defeat of Satan. We come to declare the joy of this great salvation that has come. He thought not too high a price to come down from his lofty place in heaven where there's no sorrow, no pain. The spirit realm, they, they don't have physical pain, but he came down to a place full of pain. He came down from heaven where there's no shame to a place where there's all manner of reproach and dishonor. And then he suffered in the hands of the ungodly for the cause of redeeming fallen mankind. The good news was that he went to the cross and paid our ransom price. No longer can the adversary say that we're bound without hope for our Redeemer lives. And he paid the price in full. It's done. It is finished. No longer does he have to go to a cross. No more sacrifice for sins. But if you receive this precious gift, as he said, no greater love can a man have than he lay down his life for his friends. And he stretched open his hands. He stretched open his arms. And they pierced his hands with spikes in his feet. And they nailed him to that tree. It was the worst kind of corporal punishment. It, it was a, a torturous death. It, it wasn't like uh, today they talk about humane uh, uh, putting someone away. No, it was meant to be long and suffering. And they hung him up on a tree. They were surprised when he gave up the ghost so quick. But at the point of time, at the time of the sacrifice of the lamb, it was Passover, you see. It, it was prophesied that the, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And there, there was a substitutionary sacrifice. And a lamb was slain, and the blood applied to the, over the household of faith. And on that very day, Nisan 14, AD, what is it, what's it, AD 27, AD 28, for that year, it was the middle of the week. He had had the Last Supper. It wasn't the Passover Supper, but he had the Last Supper with his disciples. And then he went out at night and he prayed, that, Father, not my will, but your will. This was not an easy thing for him to do, but he had to lay down all his pride because it was not an easy thing to suffer when you're innocent for the guilt of the shameful. For all the wretched of all, all the ages, he bore upon that cross. They tortured him all night long. They mocked him. They rebuked him. But he bore it out of love for you and for me. Some say, some sing a song. It, it, it was love that held him to that tree. But he gave up the ghost saying, it's done, it's finished, saying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. This is the good news. I, I, I want to declare this one thing that's written. His mission statement. Why he went to that cross. And he opened up in the beginning of his ministry. In, in the synagogue. So the book of Isaiah. We can read in, a, in chapter 61. Starting at verse 1. He was saying, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The Spirit of Jehovah, our Elohim, was upon him. He said, because Jehovah has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. So you don't have to have money. Come eat and drink without price and receive this great salvation. 
Yeah, it's not about, you know, it's whether you have a turtle dove or a lamb or an ox or a bull. No, he wants your soul to be saved. He wants to be reconciled with you. So he, he said to preach glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to mourn, to comfort all those who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. He came not to leave us in our state of heartbrokenness, you know, everyone, we get real with ourselves, and we get to looking at even all humanity. Isaiah said, Woe unto me when he beheld the glory of the Most High. Woe unto me for my man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Everywhere you see, we see sin. But as Father said, sure, we with a call to purify him, sanctify him, and anoint him, and send him out with his glorious message. That same forgiveness available for you and for me. When we come to ourselves and, and we're broken hearted and say, I, I can't do this on my own. He's our help. When we come to the end of ourselves and realize that we have no merit where we can be justified, His grace and His mercy is enough to clothe us when our Father sees us. He sees the righteousness of this mercy, this grace, to be washed and made clean, to made whole, to be reconciled with your Father. That's why he went to that tree. That's why he went to the cross. That's why he went down for three days into hell. He took our death penalty, even unto going to the depths of hates. But on the third day, he was raised up, glorified, the immortal, invincible, Son of God did not remain in the tomb. He did not remain in the depths of the earth. But he reigns today. He's omnipotent and he speaks every language. He was not a mere man to come to earth, born of a woman. He found his blood in this one. He found his blood on the chip, on the mercy seat. He had it sent in. Two thousand years of blood still alive. His Blood still has power to wash away sins. It, it's a, white blood cells were had to be resuscitated with, with moisture and things, but then started multiplying, and they found that they could count the DNA, found that chromosomes only matched for one parent. There, there was only one parent. Then no other human being could be whole and walk and function with half the chromosomes missing. But he was not an ordinary man. Uh, he lived without sin and he showed mercy to the multitudes. He healed all that came to him. His mercy endures forever and today he's still doing the same works. He draws nigh the broken hearted. Are, are, are you looking for hope today? Are you looking for salvation today? And you're looking for love? Maybe you're looking, they say, oh, that you're looking for love in all the wrong places. I tell you, our Father's love is pure. Our Father's love is holy, he, and He's not. He's not, he's not taking any captives. No, he, he came to set captives free. We find the false religions. A lot of false religions on the earth where they take captives. So there's some, some. They're bold enough to say, "Okay, you're ours, and you cannot leave, or we will kill you." But our, our Father in heaven, He sent His. His son, the arm of the Lord revealed that we might have life. He gave us liberty. He told his disciples, don't be like the Gentile. Don't be like the rulers of men who lord it over one another. But you teach by example. And you live to serve. And that this is how you can, troll, you, you can tell the true people of God, the true people of faith. They're not out taking captives, they're setting captives free. If you're someplace where they, you feel a constraint, like you're, you're a possession, you become under bondage, that's not the spirit of the Lord. The Lord came to set the captives free. 
I, I find in my travels many things, but we all have some things in common. Now we need the Lord. We need our Father. And he said, except you come as a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. If, you, if you're ready to be reconciled with your Father and love him as your Father, rejoice. For your redemption, redemption price has been paid. You can come freely now. You don't have to have an intercessor. You don't have to go to a certain priest. You don't have to come on a certain day or certain hour. But any time, day or night, <laughs> you call upon him. And he's quick and just and merciful to forgive sin. And his power, oh, his power is completely unfathomable to human beings. He gives sight to the blind. He raises up the dead. He opens the ears of the deaf. And he creates a clean and pure heart, even in, in the heart of the transgressors. Many today have said, once I was lost, but now I'm found. And that was the song I opened up with, Amazing Grace. And once I was lost, I, I remember when I was a young man in the university district, and there was a boy, a blonde haired blue eyed boy, couldn't have been more than 10 years old, passing out flyers. He's passing out tracks over there on 45th Street. And, and I had the audacity to tell him, oh, save a tree. He gave me a sharp rebuke. <laughs> but I, I was a teenager. And uh, now I'm preaching on the street. The Lord is good. The Lord is wonderful. I've met him. I found him to be friend times of trouble. What kind of friend is this that will overlook every fault? What is willing to forgive every offense? To restore and make you whole. This is the love of God. And this is the reason why he came. The price has been paid. And now it's for you to receive. You receive the Lord. You can come right now. You want to receive the Lord Jesus right now. You might have an issue in your body. He, the doctor is giving you a bad report but God is the ultimate authority as he made the first man out of dust he can create in you a new thing he can restore you and make you completely whole but the greatest thing is your heart to make your that heart of stone oh you've been broken hearted and now you, you don't trust anybody you got your, your doors of your soul will close up and, that, and you don't trust anybody. You can't love anybody because your heart been broken. But when you receive the forgiveness of your Father in heaven and restoration of your soul, then that same love you, that you receive, you can also give. Receive the Lord today. He is good. His mercy endures forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen.